So what I learned from address, yeah, I'm, it's an on-call nightmare, and uh, it's something we're going to talk about, and uh, I hope you enjoy the story. Uh, so first and very much foremost, um, I'm waiting for my name, there it is. That's me. My name's Jay. I'm an ops professional. I work at Microsoft. Today's my one-year anniversary, um, and one of the really coolest things that I've learned is storytelling. It's what makes working in this DevOps field interesting. And um, so I decided, to start a, I decided to start a podcast, and I call it On Call Nightmares, because I wanted to collect all your stories. I want to hear what you've been through. And then I decided, you know what? I'm coming to DevOps Day Chicago. I want to tell my story. So my podcast has three rules. Do not incriminate yourself. Do not incriminate others. And help us learn, because I do this and think of it every way as blameless, Let's be blameless and let's have retrospectives. That's what storytelling is about. So here's my story. Uh, I worked at BuzzFeed and I was uh, part of the ops team. And it was a regular day. Uh, I was building out a bunch of Mongo racks at the data center and you know, I was on call for alerts. Normal day. And then suddenly llamas. That's right. So how does a bunch of llamas impact my day? Well, Simply stated, uh, there were a pair of llamas that went on the run. Uh, you know, a real uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce kind of thing. They went on the run uh, in Arizona. They rode around the streets. And the Internet, of course, went ape shit. Because that's what the Internet does. Whenever you see ridiculous things that make people interesting and create these viral moments, alerts explode. Right? So a lot of times, you know... You're on the floor of the data center, and you're, you're figuring out why the alerts are exploding. And we found out that, you know, we had so much technical debt. So much time was spent. Um, and, and essentially, we, we built a system um, that couldn't handle the amount of traffic that we had. And so what do you do about that? You, you, you stop and you think, and you, you say, well, this is our technical debt. Let's start making some remediations. Cool. So I went home. And... Uh, do the things that we all do when we get home. Uh, 8.30 p.m., pager goes off. And I, uh, my wife asks, oh, is this because of the dress? <sighs> I ask, what dress? And then Nagios decides to tell me, this is the friggin' dress. Um, so I was able to keep some alerts from our Nagios bots. And you can see... Things were really pissed off. Um, and and, and if, uh, those of you who don't know what the dress phenomenon was, it created 670,000 active connections per second on a lamp. And that piece stood for Pearl. I'm so sorry. But, you know, and it all kind of started with the most interesting thing. Kate's, she's this wonderful woman. She works at Tumblr now. We worked at BuzzFeed. And she just had an email from someone that just said, can you settle this argument for us? And so what happened? Alerts! Alerts explode because Kate's goes out and puts out a really huge viral uh, post. And everybody says, holy shit, look, there's this dress and nobody knows what color it is. And the internet goes and does what it is, and then I get more alerts. And PagerDuty says, dude, um, yeah, you're, you're, you're screwed. Uh, so what do we do? We, we start recognizing that we reached a really, really bad point. And uh, this is supposed to be a GIF, um, but PDFs don't animate GIFs. But Chris uh, was talking to me on uh, Slack, and I literally said, dude, I'm just throwing servers into the internet to make sure that we can keep uh, some sort of things going, but it wasn't quick enough. And so Disaster Girl was a girl that came up when uh, the Pearl uh, app would go to hell. And Ben Smith, who is the editor, still is, of BuzzFeed, was saying like, yo, we can't do anything because we tied everything together and we assumed capacity. That's the whole DevOps part of this. We uh, assumed a capacity because, and I'm not going to name names because we keep blameless. Um, but people didn't want to really increase and, and use systems that, through auto-scaling that they didn't trust. So what we did was we assumed that the clothes rack we had was enough for that dress. And obviously, it wasn't. We had a huge request for people to wear that dress. And the thing that I learned, and this is how we're going to wrap up the silly story, is that you always need to be ready to restock and reassess when this season's hot style is unexpectedly in demand. Because, you know, it could create 
a nightmare. So thanks. Love you all.